Keith, uh, this is an incredibly scary thought. Explain sort of what's involved. How, how do scientists even think that they can teach a robot how to make an ethical decision to tell my car that it should swerve off the side of the road down a cliff instead of colliding with a school bus full of children? Yeah, this is an issue, Olivia, that's really bedeviling the auto industry and Google, who's also developing their own driverless car. They've figured out the technology. They know how to allow cars to drive for us, but they can't really figure out these philosophical questions like the one you just described. And that's something they're now working literally with philosophers and ethicists on to try and determine what do you do when you know a crash is unavoidable and your car has to decide between the lesser of two evils hitting a school bus full of children or going up on a sidewalk and hitting an individual they don't have all the answers yet well neither do individuals keith right i mean it's not as if there is a law that's set in stone that tells you how to drive but i'm wondering what other industries or what other historical precedent are they using to deal with this issue well, believe it or not, Pim, I mean, science fiction does play a role here. This all sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? Um, but it, it's, you know, Asimov's Laws, which comes from, you know, the author of iRobot in the 1950s, say that, you know, a robot should do no harm to a human. human. That's, that's the first rule. There are other things, like they call it morality math. You, you try and determine how many lives will be saved or how few will be harmed. Uh, but then you're putting no value on those lives. So, so each of these rules, that they might come up with have downsides and, it, and they're still very much working through them. Uh, Keith, some people say that there has to be a principle that only humans should be able to make a decision between life and death and that there needs to be some kind of hybrid functionality going on whereby you combine decision making of humans and robots. I mean, I barely know what to ask you about this. It's so hard to get my brain around it, but how would that work? Yeah, so, and the, the automakers say this too, probably with, you know, liability concerns in mind, that the human is always ultimately responsible for the car. And in those situations where a crash is unavoid, uh, unavoidable, they're going to ask the human to step back in, grab the wheel, and, and you know, swerve it out of the way themselves. Uh, that all sounds good in theory, but if you've been inattentive, you're reading a book, doing your email, you know, then how can you come back into the situation and make a snap decision and make a good one?